Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Hare Kambe. I'm a pastoralist and a veterinarian by profession. I'm here to share with you my story, which I titled The Power of a Woman. I'm a bit nervous, so I'll not move around a lot. <laughs> yeah, so when my mother was 17 years, she went through an arranged marriage to my father, who was then 52 years old. Unfortunately, my father died shortly thereafter, when my mother was pregnant with me. In my pastoral community, you are regarded as an orphan when you lose your father, but not when you lose your mother. Orphans are often subjected to a lot of uh, abuse and slave-like stature when their mother remarries. I came face to face with this in the hands of my stepfather. My mother could not tolerate me suffering like that. So because of her love for me, she opted to put me in a children's orphanage when I was just five years old. The children's home was located in Garissa town, in northeastern Kenya, some 150 kilometers from our village. In those days, because of the limited transportation, it took two to three days to travel to Garissa. My mother made the tedious trip to visit me, every chance she got when I was placed at the orphanage. I remember vividly when she took me to the home to persuade me. My mother made up many things about the orphanage, good things. She said it offered horseback riding, bicycles, lots of fruit trees, and provided a lot of food of all types. Things we in my home had never seen or experienced. So I went with her to Garissa and I was placed in the orphanage. There I met over 500 other orphan boys with whom I lived for the next eight years. These boys came from all parts of Kenya and from all tribes. They became my brothers. It did not matter. It did not matter where they came from, the color of their skin, what tribe they belonged to, or what language they spoke. We developed a common bond, and that has established our brotherhood to this date. This was my first encounter, appreciation, and tolerance for diversity. <coughs> On the occasions that when my mother visits, if I complained about the bad food, the mosquitoes, the frequent bouts of malaria, and the occasional beatings my, by my older brothers, tears would well up in her eyes. But she always told me, every time she visits, three things. She will say, Hoyo, which is an endearing word in the Somali language. Persevere, work hard, and I'm praying for you. I did as she asked and believe her prayers were answered. I intentionally worked hard in school and excelled in my all levels. I became one of the top three students in my region. I was selected to join the prestigious Nairobi School, a boys' boarding national school located in Nairobi. And that was my first opportunity also to see a city. <clears throat> I also excelled in high school as well and was told to, co to do veterinary medicine at the University of Nairobi. 
where I completed my bachelor's degree in veterinary medicine through government funding. And I later acquired a master's degree uh, in veterinary epidemiology and public health in the Royal Veterinary College, <coughs> University of London. Now it was time for me to give back. When I got my first job working as a private veterinarian, I first set up work in <coughs> Garissa and joined a national uh, and a governmental organization, uh, Veterinary Science Frontiers, where I served my community through veterinary development work. Then, <coughs> in the year 2011, drought struck hard. My mother lost 45% of her livestock, which included all of her cattle, and was left with only a few camels and goats. With time, I helped her restock. So today, she's a proud owner of about 50 camels and 150 goats. <laughs> However, my mother's livelihood is still at risk. And here is where my work at ILRI comes in. I'm the Garissa Field Coordinator, working on the livestock component of the Accelerated Value Chain Development Program. On a daily basis, I help build capacities and reduce vulnerabilities of communities, including my mothers, whose livelihood is threatened by drought, scarcity of feed because of the degraded rangelands, scarcity of water, and livestock diseases, with <coughs> especially camel diseases, which re receive minimal attention globally. <coughs> My mother always joked that uh, I should have studied only camel diseases in veterinary school. <laughs> so when it comes to Ildris tagline, better lives through livestock, as relevant as it is to all of us here, I think no, no one appreciates it. No one appreciates those four words better than my mother. Better lives through livestock. I love working in my home region and giving back to the community. Four years ago, I helped to start an all boys association to support the growth and development of the boys orphanage that raised me. We have already undertaken more than 18 projects and I serve as the secretary of the association today. So to conclude, when it comes to early critical success factors, the one I'm most proud of to serve, the one I'm most proud to serve is growing the capacity of others. My mother gave me up to an orphanage so that I could have a better life. It tore her heart and mine, but that heroic and selfless act of hers has given me hundreds of brothers for life, a fine education, and a chance to serve my livestock community. I admire my camel-loving mother for all she has accomplished in her life. In my pastoralist community, women have traditionally been given a very low status by men. It goes in the hierarchy, men first, then the animals, then the children, and lastly the women but not in my world. In my world, my mother is number one. It's time that... <laughs> it's time that my community and all African men understood the true power and place of African women, which is at the top. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would like to appreciate uh, the support given by Susan McMillan and Madoni Njiru for their support in delivering this story to you. <laughs>